Hello again, and thanks for following my channel, Garden Well, Eat Well. We all have our own collection of tools that we've gathered over the years and depend on when we're in the garden. Everything from shovels and hoes to rakes and forks. And throughout the growing season, all the way from mid-spring through to the frosty days in fall, we use them practically every day. So before we start planting, we really do need to make sure those tools are ready to go and prepared for the job. After all, they've got a lot of hard work ahead of them. Certainly, you need to make sure the metal parts are secured and tight and maybe some of those tines need to be straightened. But the point of this video today is to show you how to fully protect and weatherproof the wooden handles on all your tools. This is something you probably just take for granted. But over time, they may not be as comfortable to use it as they used to be. And may even pose a safety hazard as the wood dries out and starts to get prone to shedding slivers and splinters. I'm going to show you how to restore them. And the result you'll get, well, they could turn out to have an even better finish than they had when you first bought them. It'll only take a few minutes, and by spending this time each year or so, you'll get a lot more use out of your tools. Now here's some of my tools. Yeah, yeah they're, they're looking pretty bad right now. Pretty worn and weather-beaten. Unfortunately, I've been neglecting these for a little bit too long. I haven't done anything to protect these for a couple years, and it's, it's high time I start now. The problem is I, I use them every day, and I'm always moving around a different spot, so I have a tendency to just leave them spread around the garden. Yeah, I yeah, know, I'm kind of lazy that way. Plus, they, they get left out in all sorts of weather, leaving them to face the wind, the sun, the cold, the rain, especially the rain. These will all lead to some pretty quick aging for your tools, so don't follow that example. Instead, when you're done working outside for the day, try to put them in a good sheltered area to shield them from the elements. If you want to make them last, that's the single most simplest thing you can do. Much like what happens to any wooden deck or fence, the constant cycle of getting wet and then drying out will eventually take its toll. The handles will start to break down and will get this rough texture to them that can scour your hand when you use them for a while. They'll also get these ridges where the, the wood is opened up and when you run your hand along them, you can pick up some pretty nasty slivers if you're not careful. This is all due to water penetrating the wood and, and causing it to expand. If you let it go long enough, the cracks in the wood can also be receptive to fungus and dry rot, and the wood will break down even faster. You can avoid much of this damage if you just spend the time to protect them. And luckily, this protection is very cheap. You'll be able to take care of all your tools, and it's only going to cost a few dollars. Here's everything we need to do the job. Raw linseed oil. That's raw linseed oil. And a clean plastic container to put it into. A sock, or an old cloth towel to apply it and various grits of sandpaper to help repair the surface. Here I've got 60, 100, and 220 grits. Linseed oil is a completely natural oil. I use the raw version because it's not processed in any way. It's simply made by extracting the oil you get from pressing flaxseed. It's the same flaxseed that we can all eat. It's non-toxic and it does an excellent job at sealing and penetrating wood. Its only drawback is that it can dry slowly and has a noticeable odor until it's cured. And even though it's an oil, it washes up pretty easily with just soap and water. Now that's the raw version. You can also purchase a boil type of linseed that will dry much quicker. But make sure to check the label as some companies will also add chemical drying agents which can make the oil toxic. Raw linseed, it'll always only have that single natural ingredient. I prefer to use that because it does take longer to dry. That means it will have more time to work through the wood and get into all the pores to protect it. To me, simply adding the boiled version to the surface of the wood and have it start drying right away kind of defies the reason we're doing this. When you apply it, it's best to use a cloth with a, a soft texture that can hold onto the oil and then work it into all the grooves and cracks of the wood. A sock is perfect for this. It fits easily around your hand and it gives you great control. <laughs> this will give you a good reason to go through and clean out your old sock drawer. A towel would be a good second choice, but
but never use a paper towel. It'll, it'll shred to pieces before the job is even half done. The different types of sandpaper are needed to prepare the handles first, before we add the oil. Then we'll use the higher grits after each coat to ensure they all come out with a nice smooth finish. I prefer doing this in late winter or very early spring. This will still give you plenty of time before you actually need to use the tools in the garden. If you're lucky, you'll get some stretches of nice weather that will allow you to do this outside. You can also choose to do this in your garage, but in either case, you don't want the sawdust or the fumes from the oil to get into your house. First, you want to ensure your tools are as dry as possible. If they've been out in the elements for a while, you should put them in the garage or or in a spot where they can have a chance to completely dry out. This way, the surface will quickly accept the oil and pull it into the pores of the wood. Ideally, you could remove the handle completely so you can coat all the surfaces that make contact with any of the metal. But most tools nowadays are, are put together with permanent rivets or compressed together in such a way that you can't easily separate the handle. So you'll just have to work around that you know, the best you can. So take the coarse sandpaper. Here I'm using the 60 grit. You can tear off a piece by creasing it first and then folding it back and forth a few times. So we'll use this coarse one first and go over the entire surface. This will take off any of the caked on dirt and remove the weathered skin of the wood. I'll keep doing this until I can start seeing the lighter wood showing through. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's best to remove as much of the old surface as possible. You're not going to be able to get into the cracks too much, so don't worry about that. Now that all the rough spots are gone, I'll go over it a second time with the 100 grit. This will make it a little smoother. Then wipe off and remove as much of the sawdust as possible. I'll just use one of the socks for that. Now we're ready to start applying the oil. As I said, the sock is perfect. Just put it on your hand and you'll easily cover all the contours. Dip it into the oil. And then start applying it, pretty liberally, over the entire handle. Try to get it into every nook and cranny. Also, do your best to get the oil down into those areas that make contact with the metal. These are usually the, the prime spots for wood rot to start. After letting it sit for a few minutes, you can wipe off any excess, but I find that the wood absorbs it pretty quickly. So here I've done the first coat for two of my tools. We just need to set them aside to dry before we apply the next coat, usually a day or two. Once it's dry to the touch, we can use a finer 220 grit to lightly sand the surface and ensure it's smooth to get it ready for another coat. The oil may have raised the grain of the wood a bit, so doing this will smooth it out. Then we apply the oil again, the same way as before. If you do this every season, you probably only need to apply one or two coats. But since I haven't done these in a while, I'll put on three or four. Just wait for it to be dry to the touch between each coat. You'll get more protection with every layer. One thing regarding that oily sock or rag you used, once you're all done, you should put it in a plastic bag, seal it, and discard it. So now here are the two tools I recoded, along with a rake that I haven't touched yet. Eh, just for comparison. I've given them three coats. They're dry now, and really, they, they look fantastic. The wood is darkened up, and they have a very pleasing, deep amber color. Plus, the surface is smooth, and they have a real great feel to them now. Just to simulate some rain. Spraying water on them, you can tell the unfinished one is absorbing it all. But the other two are now protected. The water is shedding away, or it's just beading on the surface. This is exactly what we wanted. It's a great result. Now, they may be dry on the surface, but the oil is still giving off an odor and you'll probably smell it for several days or maybe a week or two, depending on how many coats you applied. 
Your best bet is to leave them in a ventilated area, preferably outside, somewhere sheltered. So our tools are ready for work. And we have plenty of linseed oil left over that we can use for several seasons. I hope you found this video helpful for your tools. And thanks very much for watching. When you garden well, you'll always eat well.